Good morning. Now, Siam and Estalacha. So, you the place in the Tata Tika, Siam and Estalacha. So, get up, Janice Kant. So, get up. It is true, it makes my heart glad to see each and every one of you here today, from the youngest to the oldest. My traditional name is Salkeda. My Christian name is Freddie Lane. I'm the 11th of 12, 12 children of the late Vernon and Nancy Lane, both of Lummi. Just on behalf of our team that's been traveling over 2,500 miles now, just would like to raise my hands to each and every one of you, just to say thank you. I start from the bottom of our hearts. I have a letter I'm going to read from Lummi Tribal Chairman Tim Ballou, too. And he sends his regards. I know it's fishing season and uh, it's really busy back at home. And this is our harvest time as a lot of our fishers are out on the Great Salish Sea. And so he couldn't be here, but he asked me to share this letter on his behalf. To those assembled, for generation, tribal peoples have witnessed the impact of faceless persons, corporations, on the lands, water, air, and human and environmental health. Though at times consulted, we have not been heard as a real voice in defending our traditional homelands and territories. Instead, we have seen the degradation of our land and water and our traditional foods and medicines and the health of our people. The Lummi and other members of the affiliated tribes of Northwest Indians and the Coast Salish gathering now face the battle of our lives, devastating proposals that would bring coal from, by rail from Montana and Wyoming to the West Coast for export overseas. Indeed, the cherry point in our language, the Chiaki, the proposed proposed proposes an unprecedented ecological, cultural, and socio-economic threat to Pacific Northwest tribes. Pachiakin, the place of the mink, is a 3,500-year-old village site where many of our ancestors lived and made their final resting places. Today, 60% of Lummi have direct ancestral ties to this site. Around it, the Salish Sea supports a Lummi fishing fleet that includes over 450 vessels and over 1,000 tribal members. Coal exports threaten all of this. We fear the desecration of Cherry Point, the first archaeological site to be placed on the Washington State Register of Historic Places. We wonder how Salish Sea fisheries, already impacted by the decades of pollution and global warming, respond to the toxic runoff from the water needed for coal piles stored on the site. How will Bellingham's recreational and commercial boaters navigate when more than 400 cave-sized ships, each a thousand feet long, depart Cherry Point, each year bearing individual loads of 287,000 tons of coal? What will happen to the region's air quality as coal trains bring dust and diesel pollution, and of course, any coal burn overseas will come home to our state as mercury pollution in our fish. Already coal export officials have shown, have shown breathtaking disrespect for our heritage. To save time and boost profits, the Pacific International Terminals, known as PIT, bulldozed what they knew to be a registered archaeological site and drained our wetlands without a permit. This proposal is not based on economic necessity. The inflated number of jobs promised is an old, story, old, old story, one filled with promises made and promises broken. At the end of the day, there will be far fewer jobs created and many sustainable ones lost or compromised. The defeat of this madness is our aboriginal duties 
as first Americans, but it also speaks to the collective interests of all citizens, and most importantly, as members of the human family who are a part of, not masters of, the creation. But this is a new day. To those who would sacrifice the way of life of all peoples of the Pacific Northwest, we say, take notice, you will not win this battle. Enough is enough. This summer's proposed changes to the Gateway Pacific Terminal site design are beside the point and outside a larger truth. The impacts cannot be mitigated. We will stop the development of the export terminal and put in its place a plan that honors our shared responsibility to the land and waters of Kuchiakin and all our relations. In late August, Lummi tribal members will begin a journey from South Dakota to the Salish Sea and north to Alberta, Canada, stopping with many of the tribal and non-tribal communities who, whose lives unwillingly intersect with the past of coal exports and tar sands. We will carry with us a 19-foot tall totem pole that brings to mind our shared responsibility for the lands, the waters, and the peoples who face environmental and cultural devastation from fossil fuel mega projects. We travel in honor of the late leader and guiding light, the late Billy Frank Jr. <laughs> Billy will remind us of the larger truth that we are placed here to live with respect for our shared sacred obligation to creation, the plants, the animals, the people, and all our relations. He guides us still. Our commitment to place to each other unites us as one people, one voice, to call out to others who understand that our shared responsibility is to leave a better, more valuable world for those to follow. All my relations, Chairman Timberley. Thank you. So I want you to take a minute and look around. And for those of you up here, look back there. Uh, here at the cathedral, we call this a Christmas and Easter crowd. <laughs> that means it's a big crowd. Uh, but what we've heard today is it's got to get bigger. Let's go from this place and multiply those who follow.